Simulink is a platform for model-based design, and that means that models are at the center of the development process. This can be from requirements capture all the way to the operation of the system that you're building. Or you can use models at any stage of your development for things like modeling and simulation, testing and verification, and automatic code generation. Today, I'm going to cover uh, capabilities that help you focus on your work, capabilities that help you co collaborate with others, and then I'll close with some resources for upgrading and for staying up to date. I'm going to cover most topics with examples, and you will have access to these examples. They're all included in the product or in file exchange in MATLAB Central. And the goal with the examples is to show you how the features work, but also to give you a starting point for you to be able to use these capabilities in your own projects. And then I also have this checklist model that I'll use as a tracker as we cover our features today. So let's start with model editing. In the past, you had to have the library browser open and you had to drag and drop components into your model. And the issue with that was the context switching. It felt like the tool was in the way of your thought process. So we improved that with predictive quick inserts. So now you can just type in the canvas and you get suggestions and you can insert blocks and model elements or find actions in that way. So now it's much easier and faster to sketch out a model. You start by just drawing in the canvas. You can also size and snap to other objects that are all already there. You make connections quickly. You can also rename ports as you create them. And you add connections anywhere. And it's pretty easy to have models that are clean, readable, and also well-documented. For example, it's easy to add information to your model by just dragging and dropping information or copy-pasting that information in the canvas. And Simulink helps you resize blocks to show ports and parameters more clearly. Also, if you work with the keyboard, uh, there are improvements there too. So you can move around in your model with the arrow keys. And you can also toggle to select one or more elements and change the placement for those blocks. And you can also edit the text on model elements with F2. So you can easily rename blocks that way. And that also works with all of our editors, including Stateflow. Speaking of Stateflow, there are improvements for editing state charts and decision logic. To show you those, I'm going to use this model if of a dual clutch transmission. So if we go into the transmission controller, here we go into the shift state, there is a state flow chart. So if we focus on the bottom section of this state chart, the first thing you'll see is that we can now use quick insert, just like we can in Simulink to introduce elements into our chart. You also get smart edit guides that help you align elements in the canvas. And another improvement is that it's really simple to reverse the transitions in your logic. So for example, if I take this transition here, it takes just one click for me to reverse that transition. And I can do that with this one here as well. So something that used to take three clicks at least now takes one click. And you can also undo that with Control Z as I'm doing right here. Another improvement is the transition label stems that help you avoid confusion where maybe your conditions are placed uh, too far away from the right condition. So now you can avoid that confusion because you can tell which condition is associated with what transition. And finally, last but not least, Stateflow also lets you customize the syntax highlighting for your data now. So when you enable that under the format options in the tool strip and the style button, you can customize the colors for specific types of data. So for example, here, I can change the color for local data. And when I apply that, you see the change, but you can also turn it on and turn it off as well to focus on the type of data that you're most interested in. Finally, I also want to 
talk about the tool strip because the tool strip is a major improvement for how Simulink presents you capabilities that help you do your work. A nice thing about the tool strip is that it presents to you features and menus based on the work that you're doing and the elements that you select. In addition to that, the menus in the tool strip are organized by workflow. So you get a tab for simulation, for debugging, modeling, one for format, and also one for apps. And these apps are user interfaces that have their own workflow. And so they make it easier for you to accomplish specific tasks. For example, things like an automatic code generation from your models uh, and a lot more. So those are the enhancements that I wanted to cover for model editing. So now we can check that of our list from our checklist model. And now I want to talk to you about capabilities for speeding up simulations. And one great way to do that is by running large simulation jobs in parallel. The example that I'm using is in this documentation link that you see here at the bottom of the screen. And in this example, we're running parallel simulations while changing two variables. We're going to change the cross-sectional area of a tank, that's A, and the height of the tank, that's H. And the goal is to determine the total cost in dollars of producing a tank full of product. Again, in very generic terms, we're varying the area and height of a tank to determine a dollar cost. I've already configured my parsim script to vary A and H between zero and five, and I'm running 750 simulations with 20 workers. If we look at the script I used to set up the simulations, the first section opens the Simulink model. It specifies the range of values we want to try for the variables A and H, and it randomizes the 750 samples. So we run that. The next section defines the simulation input object we want to use with our model, and it specifies the post sim function that I'm using to calculate the cost in our problem. So we run that too, and then the last section passes the different values for our variables. It also creates the parallel pool of 20 workers, and it runs the simulation in parallel with the parsing command. Here I'm using the simulation manager to monitor and analyze the simulations as they happen. And fast restart helps me speed up things because the model only compiles once and then it's ready to go for all the next iterations. Here, the simulation manager window comes up and it helps you monitor progress for multiple simulations and visualize the results as the job is running. If we look at figure one, we see a scatter showing the simulation status for combinations of A and H. So this can tell us right away what ranges cause the simulations to error out because we would see red dots in the scatter plot. We can also add as many figures as we need. I'm actually going to add a surface plot. And here I want to see the relationship between our variables and the cost. So I make those changes in the plot properties and I get an idea of what the relationship looks like. And I can also add a color bar to estimate values. I can also visualize the same data as a scatter plot in 2D. So I'll add another figure and I'm going to configure the axes with the right variables. And now I can customize the layout of how all this information is presented to us. And we can even select data points in plots for specific regions of interest. So there you have it. This massive simulation workflow is valuable with these analysis capabilities that have been added recently. So the goal here is to help you save time as you explore the design space and run large simulations. Another great capability for speeding up simulations is the performance advisor. So if we open up the model that we just simulated in parallel, or any other model, we can get to the performance advisor from the debug tab in the Simulink tool strip. So here's the performance advisor. And this advisor runs checks and gives you suggestions on changes that you can make or configuration parameters you can modify to speed up the execution of your models. 
And there are a lot of checks. So I encourage you to check it out on your end, give it a try today. And it also points you to other advisors for things like upgrading or generating code. You can always learn more in our documentation for this advisor. And there are also dedicated videos on how to use it with specific examples. So be sure to check those out. But I just wanted to make you aware that this is also available for you. So that is it for performance. And we can check that in our checklist. And we can move on to the next topic, which is modeling runtime software.